Welcome back to another episode of Speed Mixing, and this time I'm going to be mixing drums in five minutes. Why should you care about speed mixing? Because you're going to learn what the most important things are for mixing drums and getting a powerful performance. And this session has a ton of raw drum tracks. I'm going to show you how to take from unpolished and raw all the way to a big punchy sound in hopefully five minutes. Now, as a thank you for you spending your time with me today, I have a free downloadable mixing cheat sheet that has my go-to settings for guitars, drums, bass, vocals, everything that you're going to run into in a song. So be sure to grab that before you leave. All right, this session is by a band called Demoralize. It is a song that I mixed a while ago. Let me just play it for you with the raw drums. My head is heavy, my senses. Cool. So we have a really, really good drum performance. I just want to quickly show you what we're working with. We have the snare top and bottom mic. I have a kick drum in and out mic. I have four different tom mics. I have hi-hats, ride, china, two overheads left and right. And then I also have room left and right, which is awesome. If you guys aren't recording room mics when you're doing drums, you are missing out because that is the secret sauce to making a drum kit sound massive. And I have a ton of videos on how to mix drum room mics if you just search my channel. Now, just a few quick things I want to mention before we jump into it. When you are mixing, you should take care of all of the technical tasks that you just have to do to set up your session before you start mixing. You don't want to be routing channels when you're trying to make your snare drum sound good. It takes you out of the moment and you'll lose perspective when you're mixing. That includes cleaning up your tracks. Something not a lot of people realize is that all of this dead space in these different tracks creates mud in the mix that you're going to have to fight. Okay? So for your Tom tracks, I highly, highly recommend that you go through and you edit everything out except for just the parts that you're going to be using in the song. So everything that's not a Tom hit in these channels, you should go through and edit out, okay? Because if you listen to what just the Tom tracks sound like, they almost sound like room mics, right? So get rid of all of that extra stuff and just leave the Tom hits by themselves. That is super important. Be sure to do that with your hi-hats, do that with your ride cymbals. If you have a China mic, do that there. And I even get rid of some of the snare tracks if it's not being hit. It all adds to the clarity of the final mix. All right, enough blabbing. Five minutes on the clock. I hate, I hate doing this. It is so hard to mix something in five minutes. But we're going to do it. And you guys are going to learn a lot on the way. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Let's hit it. All right, first up, all my tracks are routed. I have snare top and bottom. The fastest way that we can probably get a good sound is just to use a channel strip. It has everything that we'd ever need built into it. I'm going to use this one by Waves. Okay, it has a gate in it. Let's quickly gate this signal. Right here, gate, set the threshold. Okay, yeah, I'm just going to tighten it up just so you can hear the end of the snare. Good enough for me. All right, let's add a little compression. What this is doing is this is giving the snare a little bit more initial punch. We want that on our drums. This is like saturation. Cool. All right, there's too much boom. Let's clean it up with this high pass filter. Good enough that gets rid of the snare drum or the kick drum in that mic. We can put uh, maybe a 10k or 12k low pass filter that cleans up any cymbals bleeding through, and then let's just boost the top end, get a little slap to that snare. There it is. The snare. Now we can hear the strings. Let's add a little bit of that 3k. Let's get rid of some of the mud. I'm hearing mud. So I'm just going to search for it quickly using this. Like that. We don't want that in there. Awesome. Let's add 200 hertz. Let's make it a bell. That gives it the power. 
perfect. All right, that's done. I don't have time. Let's copy and paste this to the bottom. <laughs> snare drum. And uh, with, this, with the bottom snare drum, I like to use it just to add the attack because you're getting just the, the strings. Okay, so I like to tighten up the gate a little bit more. Right, like that. Perfect. Maybe a little bit more compression. All right, that's all we have time for. Let's keep moving. Now, I'm not totally sold on the sound of the snare. Okay, it needs a little bit more. So that's when we do sample replacement. I'm using Steven Slate Trigger. I have uh, Bogren Digital samples, and it looks like maybe some Get Good Drums in here. These are my go-to settings, and now I can adjust the mix to kind of blend in the amount of sample. Perfect. These have some room to them in the drum sample, so it gives it a sense of space. That's really important. If your drums feel flat, definitely augment with samples. Let's go to the kick. We have to do the same thing here because we're running out of time. Let's just, I'm sending both the kick in and out straight to uh, the kick drum channel, the group channel. We're going to do SSL again. I just got to get something going. Okay, we're gonna tighten it up. The gate. Add the 8K gives a nice snap. Cool. And then we'll just tighten up a little bit here. Oh my gosh, we have one minute left. This is nuts. Cool. We're gonna add sample because I don't have time to fix this. So kick drum sample, I again, boat and digital, uh, the sumo, sumo blend, and then also the metal drum kit. It's a free kick drum, it sounds killer. Cool. So our kick and snare sound like this. Sounding pretty good. Toms, not even mess with them, let's just sample replace them with uh, Steven Slate's quick tom. Don't have time to even mix. Oh my gosh. 30 seconds. All right. Toms are done. <laughs> Drum cymbals. Number one thing we got to do with these, we have to EQ them. Let's clean up the mud. Get rid of that. That's like 400 hertz. Get rid of the bass. That's rumble. And then maybe a little bit of the very top end. That's about it. And then, oh, we have rooms. I ran out of time. Uh, five minutes is insane, guys. I can't even tell you. Let me just finish the rooms and we'll see how the drum mix sounds, I guess. <laughs> so for drum rooms, I like to do a few things. One, again, we gotta clean up the mud and then we wanna compress them to kind of bring out a little bit more of the space in the mix and we'll just fade that up, okay? So let me just do that quickly. This is the EQ I had in the actual mix. It looks insane, but let me rebuild it from scratch. Okay. First things first, let's get rid of all the rumble. Okay, too much. You just want a tiny bit of the body of the snare to be in there, but that's like it. Okay, right there. We want to get rid of some of that sizzly, splatty, like splashy, washy sounds from the cymbals. This. The room mics should not be messing at all with the cymbals. It should just sound like you're listening to a drummer play in the, in the house next door to you, okay? So that's way too bright. It's just going to add a lot of harshness, and it's going to be confusing. So let's also put a low-pass open roll-offs in the very top end. Now it's starting to sound like there's someone playing drums in your garage. That's what we're going for. And let's just clean up a little bit more mud. That boxiness. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of compression. Um, we'll just use like an LA-2A. I'll just use this one by Waves. I have it. It sounds pretty good to me. The idea between compressing room mics is to add length to the drum kit, okay? So when you compress it, you're taking the loudest parts of the cymbal, bring it down, and then the quieter parts are there longer. So 
you can usually turn up the level a little bit more and it creates more length. That's why people use compressor on drums is to add length and maybe punch sometimes. Okay, that sounded pretty good. We're just gonna clip it just to get up to level. And then I always like to side chain my drum room mics to my shells or my kick, snare, and toms. And that's gonna give it some movement and motion. But I don't have time to describe that because I said I was gonna do this in five minutes and I'm already over. So let me just um, hit play on the drums. We'll fade up that room mic and see how we're doing. Not the worst thing I've ever done. All right, so let's increase the level of this, the rooms. Back that off too much. For me personally, that's certainly not enough compression. I would actually get way more. I would like abuse the drums like this. Yeah. And a nice fast release so that it gets a little bit of this motion going. And the cool thing about the Wave CLA uh, 76 is they have mix knobs now and everything. So we can do parallel compression just by dialing this back. Good enough. Okay. That's, that's going to give us the space. Let me mute that. See how it sounds small? And then with it in, it just adds a little bit of width and extra dimension. That's the magic of the room mics. That's why everybody should record with room mics. And if you can't, you can kind of fake this with overheads. You just have to process them a little bit differently. And you might be able to get away with copying and pasting your overheads as room mics in separate channels and then just compressing them to death like I did here and then kind of re-EQing it and then just ride that up. Um, to add that width that might be missing. Now, I didn't get a chance to talk about like bus compression and all that. So clearly it's more important to get the sound right at the source than dealing with all the bus compression stuff. But the bus compressor, if I just show you quickly, all this is gonna really do is add a little bit of glue. So when the snare drum gets hit or the kick drums hit, the cymbals will kind of duck down and that's gonna simulate how our ears naturally hear loud sounds. So when there's a shock wave, we have fluid that's in our ear, and what it does is it like attenuates the sound briefly and then lets it come back in. So we're basically recreating that physiological response to drums using plugins. So when that kick drum and the snare drum's hitting, it's gonna be ducking the sounds a little bit. Make sure you add a lot of attack here. We want the full punch of the snare and kick drum to go through anywhere from 50 to 80 milliseconds. I have some good settings in that free downloadable guide in the description if you want to check that out. And then your release time should be, uh, should just basically dance with the music. So this is FabFilter Pro C. You can use any compressor. You don't have to use this one. And I just like a few dB here. I don't want to do too much on the bus. It's just to give it a little bit of motion. Okay? And then I'm just going to clip it because I love clipping drums. It adds a lot of aggression to them uh, without killing the transients. But our kick drum is starting to get a little farty sounding, so we just want to back off on the output here. Here we go. So there you go. That was actually like drums in like 10 minutes. I'm sorry, I tried. Let's hear how it sounds in the mix. Let's turn the drums down. Okay, cymbals are a little loud. We can bring those back. Here's where we started. We did a pretty good job for five minutes. I see way too many people trying to mix just one element of the drum kit for hours, trying to get it to sound perfect. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because all of those pieces have to fit together. This is the importance of this speed mixing drill when you're mixing music. Get the balance right. 
get the tones right, and then you can spend a little bit more time getting all the pieces to fit. I guarantee you're going to have a better end result for your music. I'm really curious. Leave me a comment and tell me if you thought I was able to make the drums sound decent in five minutes. And let me know what plugins you would use to mix drums as fast as possible. Now, I want to remind you to grab my free downloadable mixing cheat sheet. There's a link in the description. My name is Bobby Balo. I'm the mixing mastering engineer at Rayton Productions, and I'll see you in another video.